Welcome back to our first episode after we've finally reached 100,000 subscribers. Amazing. Never thought we'd reach it, but we have, and we're on our way into the new year where we're going to be offering you a lot more mind blowing content. We're going to raise the bar quite a bit over what you've seen this year. A big reason why we've reached 100,000 subscribers is because of GTA, Grand Theft Auto. So my first idea was to listen to you guys. You've been asking for it. You want to see Cyberpunk 2077 as a critique from my design point of view. It's going to be a blast talking about them and uh, sit back, buckle up, and let's have some fun. In 2077, they voted my city the worst place to live in America. Main issues, sky high rate of violence, and more people living below the poverty line than anywhere else. There have been a few glitches. We all know about that. Here's the fact. It happens all the time. Get used to it. There's always going to be a development period and you're always going to be pushed by management to bring it out sooner rather than later. I've experienced it myself. I remember working on a project with McLaren, the very first one we put out as a road car, which was the MP4-12C. And at the last minute, the supplier of the software system pulled out and we didn't really have any kind of sat-nav uh, infotainment system available. And the car had to be launched. We had our launch dates fixed. We launched it and we got all kinds of flack from the press, but we had to bring the car out and it took us a while to, to get the bug sorted out, but we managed to do it. And again, after we managed to do it, it was one of the best systems of all time. I would rate it pretty highly, but at the same time, it took us a while to get it right. So for the moment, I think from a design critique, we've got enough meat to bite into. There's enough to talk about. They've certainly dreamt up a lot of interesting uh, directions here. It's gonna be a blast. Look at it this way. These cars are actually 80s cars or even 70s cars. They're what we'd call almost a, um, an 80s interpretation of the future. If we had to name the type of vehicles in Cyberpunk 2077, I think the best description to begin with is retro futuristic. And if we have to pick a hero of the whole collection that I've uh, perused through, I would have to say the hero car of them all is the Quadra Turbo RV Tech kind of looks like USA's or Detroit's attempt to do something a little bit Italian because if you look at it remarkably it has a lot of similarities with a Testarossa the Ferrari Testarossa so in the side strakes you can see that clearly there's that Testarossa style of slats that go through there from a design point of view let's analyze it it looks absolutely like you would imagine a muscle car that's just been put on steroids so more muscly than, than a muscle car. The wheels look aggressive. They have those balloon style tires on them, which were very famous in the 70s. Basically, yeah, an Italianized uh, Detroit muscle car. I mean, from a design point of view, if you want to look at it, you can really say it's a mess because it's here, there, everywhere. The, the surfaces are going one way and then they suddenly change and go another way. But let's appreciate it for that because it's what I originally called it, a sort of retro future. How do we take something and keep the character of it yet do it in a way that makes it look like something you've you've had to slap together Mad Max style. Crazy with a K, cool with a K, because it does look strange, but cool. Crazy cool. So the next one is one that I, I personally can't stop laughing. Can't imagine the designer, how he, he must have enjoyed designing this one. But again, these are names. Chevillon Thrax 388 Jefferson. So... Let's just call it the Chevy on Thrax. This car is, you know, if you're a manager, an exec, somebody kind of worried about getting followed, uh, being attacked, you'd probably have one of these in your collection. It is heavy. It's obviously got the power to, to get it going. It probably takes a while to get going, but once you're going, it's got definitely that look of uh, nothing's gonna stop me from getting to where I'm gonna go. This is definitely not the vehicle you're gonna to use to rob a bank and try to get away from the police in. It's gonna take a while to get up to top speed. But again, you will get to your destination in one piece. There's not a lot of shape going on in this car. This is definitely one of those early 70s 
type of US vehicles that were commanded a lot of respect. I mean, you can't say this car doesn't command respect. It's massive, it's, it's, it's got an, a, a certain amount of elegance to it. It's sinister, definitely sinister. This car in black, I mean, this has got to be, whoever is in that car, you, you better say yes, sir, every time you speak with them, even before you say anything. The grill on this car is magnificent. I don't know why nobody's ever come up with a grill like this one, it's looking like the Parthenon or the Acropolis. But what's interesting on this one is they've, they've actually taken it and made it asymmetrical. So it's, it's down the middle and off to one side. So who's ever thought of that? It's, it's definitely a, an interesting approach design wise again who cares about it aerodynamics when you're when you're running something that looks like a fist it's hard to imagine that design will be going in this exact direction in 2077 tires might not even exist in 2077 we may be having some kind of magnetic uh lift type of system where we're running on a cushion of air or something i don't know this type of design isn't even unimaginable today. All you have to do is take one of the older classic cars, pull the engine out and set a new electric engine in there. So it can be a trend. It can be something that we'll be seeing in the future. I wouldn't say it's going to take us that long to get there. As long as we're happy with them looking like these cars here in 2077, where they have their own niche. You, basically you are the designer of the vehicle with your 3D printing methods or whatever new methods come along. Cool. Next car, the <laughs> Maki Gai Mai Mai. This car is tough to love, but at the same time, because of that reason that it's inexpensive, it does have quite a few advantages. Now, this is the kind of car you want to have if you want a little nippy little Japanese run around. It's easy to steer, easy to get around, easy to park. I mean, easy to park. Who parks their car in a, in a video game? Typically, you, you run it up, up on the curb, and, and you jump out, don't you? You don't really worry about parking. So if you want to park in a video game, this is the car for you. From a design point of view, I think the overriding uh, deciding factor to take this car to production is let's cut costs. But it's interesting that the, the developers have thought about producing a vehicle that, that meets all levels of society and this is the one that meets the lowest end of, of financial means. When you are in that class you're really not concerned too much about design. You're not showing your status. You're not worried about what the neighbors think. I mean if you took a cyber truck and you took a smart car and they went off and had some fun, came back <gasps> and sh the smart car had a baby. And actually the cyber car, ooh, one of them had a baby. This would be it. So the next one I'm going to speak about is the Arch Nazare. A lot of you might know that my actual passion is two wheels instead of four wheels. Arch Motorcycles is a very interesting brand. It actually exists. Keanu is co-partnered with a great friend of mine, Guard, Guard Hollinger. Hi Guard, because I know I should be getting back to you and, and I haven't forgotten. Guard and Keanu have this, this company called Arch Motorcycles. And so what I'm getting at is that they've done this, this bike called the Arch Nazare. It's included in here. And this bike is actually kind of based on what they actually produce. One of the bikes they've done is called the Method 143. But if you look at this motorcycle, I mean, this is definitely in the future. The bike, I mean, it can't get better. I'd probably have to choose this over any other vehicle in the game. In the game. So if you're looking for a way to get away quickly, you don't want a car. You want this Nazare. This will get you to where you're going. This one for me is all about what a real sort of cafe racer type vehicle might look like, might be like in the future. So, so there's a lot of appeal. It's hard to say, okay, you know, from a design point of view, you should have done this or done that. I think it looks great as it is. It's got that aggressiveness that you want from a motorcycle. There's something powerful going on in that engine there. I would love to be on this bike. I'd love to ride it. I'd love to ride it now. Can't wait to try it out. Now the next one is really cool. I mean, I'm sure there are a lot of Porsche files out there who know all about the 911, the Porsche 911. This one here grabs me for a, for a few different reasons. It doesn't try to change the vehicle very much. I mean, it's been what we call very sympathetically done. It holds true to the values of the 930. 
you know, the mirrors, for example, which are kind of, for me, they've always been iconic on Porsches. They've updated this one in a way that comes across as being a little bit more futuristic with the cameras because this is something we're all trying to do today. There are a few things going on on the rear spoiler, you know, on top when you look down on it, a lot of sci-fi things going on and it kind of pushes it up a level. I don't know what they do. This is the one that, that makes me feel like I'm going to win. Whatever I'm driving, I'm going to get away or I'm going to get to whatever I have to, where I'm going with this car. Great, great interpretation. I'm glad that they didn't stray away too far from an already awesome vehicle. So not to knock GTA, but the level of detail, the level of design, the level of quality, everything on this interior that Cyberpunk 2077 has put together for the 911 Turbo is for me, incredible. I mean, it puts every other interior to shame on any other game that I've ever played on. And so I really, really appreciate the effort that they've done to make the interiors and all these vehicles unique and distinctive and faithful. So, wow, I love it. And so the next one, now if you think the Maki guy was all about affordable transportation, it gets even more affordable. The Galena G240 is four wheels. I think it's got an engine. It makes a sound, it moves, and that's about it. This car is old. It's come out in the year 2031-ish, I think it was. If you actually take this car here and you think about what a version of it could be, then we're looking at the Thornton Gecko. They say that the uh, Thornton Galena, you know, it's not going to last very long in any harsh conditions. You don't want a car like that in Cyberpunk 2077. But what you do want is a gecko because it's cheap, but at the same time, what you're gonna be able to do is modify this car. So you're modifying the standard model. It even goes to show how in the future, it's gonna get exciting, how we can just take newer tech and still apply that newer tech and plug it in to existing tech and make it that much more, much more better. It's plug and play. Basically what we do today, we have a standard piece of equipment, we plug in new accessories, new upgrades, whatever, and that suddenly becomes a super machine. And that's what they've done here. It's something to look forward to in the future. The ones that get me really excited are not cars, these are bikes. Woof, I'd love to ride this one. This is called the Yaiba Kusanagi CT-Dash. 3x so this kusanagi is the fastest bike you can get here it's also probably uh well it definitely is the most expensive one you can just look at it and see that it's incredibly cool looking in my book i love the look of this thing it reminds me a little bit of the oof, what was that called the akira ceramic double rotor two-wheel drive man it even has computer controlled anti-lock brakes. I just like the look of it. I mean, it's it's nothing in my kind of design language that I use normally for designing about, you know, flowing and curving and sensuality and sexy and all this. This is basically you're riding a machine. It's intimidating to look at. It's, it's kind of like opening a book to a science book of something that you're interested in, but you have no clue about it and everything you see, you're learning something new. The one thing that attracts me from the rear view is the design of that, let's call it an exhaust because I would imagine it's exhaust and somebody might tell me it's a vent or something, but it definitely looks like a newfangled exhaust. I love the way they've gone to town with making it look very, very unique and, and, and specific to this vehicle. It's an unusual, call it update of a past design. So they've done it very well. I, I would definitely love to have a bike with that kind of intricacy that it's not intricate it's more like detailed design but at least they've given it quite a bit of thought this is a vehicle that you kind of wish you were around in 2077 to ride it but it kind of feels like you are the machine the machine is just a little tool underneath you in one small summary i think this bike probably for me is the one that i would ride or use or get the most enjoyment from in all the vehicles I've seen on Cyberpunk 2077, that might come a shock to you, knowing that I'm a car designer. I, I wish I could have had a bike in my resume and my CV, but I regretfully don't. But again, this is the kind of 
vehicle that I definitely would love to choose for Cyberpunk 2077. So, so coming on to the last one now, and I don't think I could get away lightly if I didn't speak at least about one hypercar. And I've looked at them pretty thoroughly, and the one that really, really stands out for me is the Rayfield Arundite S9 Guinevere. This car is not for people who have to ask how much does it cost. A masterpiece. The engine is the most incredible engine you can ask for. The, the performance of this car, therefore, is as high as you're going to get. The car has no windows. You don't need windows with this car. You're inside and the outside is projected onto the inside. Amazing feature. I, I actually do think this is coming. It's an English car, uh, so there is a certain amount of restrainment in the design of this car. With the size and depth of a grill like this one, if a small child or a small dog happens to get in front of it, it's gonna get sucked in like a whale sucks in plankton. And if you're a full-sized adult, happening to stand in front of this vehicle when it's coming at you, you're definitely gonna be sliced by that spline that goes right down the middle of this vehicle, much like on a Bugatti. Look at the proportions on this vehicle. They're insane. I mean, a car like this just, just, just screams presence. And that kind of gives you this regal look, like, uh, like you've made it and you're showing it incredible i love it and there you have it that's uh my analysis of our first analysis because we might have to do it again there's always updates coming along but the first design analysis of cyberpunk 2077 the most important thing i think i've learned here is that they're not all super fresh designs of what we would imagine uh 2077 to offer us i think they're they're showing sort of this connection with the past I love what they've done. I'm looking forward to Cyberpunk 2077. Any critiques on what I've said uh, are welcome. I love reading your, your, your comments. In the next year, we are coming up with some new ways of making videos. Stay tuned.